Now, this is um, another great question there. Um, would have been probably one of the harder questions in this in this exam, really, a Part B question. Straight away, you'll notice it's a, a, trig a trigonometric functions and graphs question. Okay, but you'll see later on that there's a nice bit of trigon or differentiation in there as well. And like any time we're dealing with functions or calculus or anything like that, just remember the two key questions. Right, first one when you're when you're approaching a question is which function do I use? Now that means do I use the original function that we're given? Do I use the first derivative of this function, or do I even use the second derivative of this function? So that's the first kind of question you ask yourself. And the second question is, are you substituting or are you solving? Okay, and you'll see what I mean by this in a second. And like this function tells us, okay, what are the number of weeks? It's the, sorry, the revenue revenue produced by a company depending on the number of weeks. So if I wanted to know what the revenue of the company is after five weeks, I put five in there instead of t, and that's what you're asked for in question one. Right, twenty weeks. What's the approximate revenue after twenty weeks? So to answer these two questions, well, we're using this original function, and are we substituting or solving? We're just substituting twenty in there instead of instead of t. Okay, your calculator will do all that work for you there. You don't just be careful when you're when you're typing it in, and it comes out as this twenty thousand six hundred fifty eight point five one. So and it's to the nearest euro. So that's the revenue based on this formula. That's the revenue that this company is going to make after twenty weeks. Okay, very straightforward. Now with this question, however. It's slightly slightly trickier, all right? So we have find the two values of time t. So we're looking for t here when the revenue is approximately this, 26,250, okay? So we're still working with the original function, but in this case, we're actually putting it equal to 26,250 and solving, okay? So that's what's gonna happen here, all right? So now we need to go and solve this equation. Right? And there's quite a bit in this. Now, if you're not familiar with solving tri the, the easier types of trigonometric functions and graphs, you'll have no hope really with this one. So if, if you're not familiar with any of this, I would definitely recommend going back and trying to figure out just the basic trigonometric functions and graphs. There's four steps to it, or three or four steps, depending on the question. Um, and they go something like this. So I always call the, the first step the kind of preliminary step. Like that 22,500 and that 37,500, that, that 37, they're kind of just in the way, really. We can't solve this until its cost of something equals something. So we get rid of the 37,500 by taking it from both sides and get rid of this by dividing, just a bit of balancing the equation. So take 37,500 divided by 22,500. And lo and behold, it actually comes out as a nice simple fraction of a half, or minus a half. Okay, so we could rewrite this entire equation as cos of this is equal to minus a half. All right, so that's your preliminary step. Now, your first proper step then is find the reference angle. Now, if you look at it, it's cos of this is equal to a half. So what you need to do now is go to your log tables. Now, this page on the log tables, it should be your first port to call. We're looking for the reference angle that refers to, to a half. We ignore the minus. We ignore all this stuff here. We just want the reference angle that refers to a half. We're dealing with radians. Right? Be careful. All the question, all the information so far said it's in radians. So straight away, we just look for a half, and it's pi over 3. So pi over 3 is our reference angle. So our reference angle is pi over 3. Now, next thing, we go to cast. Right? And we'll talk about our unit circle now in a second. Now, because it's a minus then we know that this that, that cos is negative in the second and third quadrants. Right? So if we look now at our unit circle, right, and I always re recommend that you draw these out, pi over 3 is here. That's pi over 3 is an angle. It's 60 degrees if you want to do it in degrees, but don't do it in degrees. So, But we're looking for this. Uh, all of these angles here have a reference angle of 60 degrees. So it's either going to be this angle, this angle, this angle, or this angle. Right, and we know that our angle, the angles that we're looking for, are going to be in the second and third quadrants. So it's these two angles here. Okay, now then, what? How do we find these two angles? Well, we know that that's pi over three. So we want the angle from here to here. Now we know the angle from here to here is pi radians. So we just go pi and we go back pi over three. So and here we go pi and we go forward pi over three. So that's going to be four pi over three. That's going to be two pi over three. Now, if, if that makes no sense to you, it's just because you're not familiar with radians, you're not familiar with the unit circle. But hopefully that should make perfect sense. So these are actually our two solutions here. So now we go to our solution, right? So we know that our, our two answers are 4 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. So it's pi over 26 t is equal to 2 pi over 3. So that's that is equal to that. And now we just need to solve this. Now, luckily the pi's will cancel here. Okay, so the pi's will cancel. 
cross multiply so it'll be 26 by 2 divided by 3 base laser our answer here which is 17.33 and then we have this bit here so 4 pi over, pi over 26 t is equal to 4 pi over 3 and when we rearrange that it comes out as 34.67 what that actually means is that after 17.33 weeks then the revenue is going to be that and also after 34.67 weeks the revenue is going to be that now there's quite a lot in that right if you're not from as i said earlier if you're not familiar with these these type of equations solving trigonometric equations you really need to go back and make sure you know these steps off by heart and you know everything that needs, needs to be done there now part c then now they give you a few clues here as to approach the rest of this question and they, they give it to you here it's clear here they ask you for the derivative of this they don't always do that but in this case they do so we just want to differentiate this and there should be no problem really differentiating this the thirty-seven thousand five hundred. that's just going to go to zero because there's no t next to it now how do we differentiate trigonometric functions well the twenty-two thousand five hundred stays the exact same cos of pi over 26t goes to minus sine of pi over 26t and but the only all you need to remember what to do is also you need to multiply by the derivative of the angle which is just pi over 26 okay so look at that carefully there now so 22,500 stays the exact same cos goes to sine the angle stays the exact same but multiply by the derivative of the angle okay now we can simplify that further now we can multiply that by that and the 26 will cancel slightly with that and we're just left with that over 13 okay so that's our derivative here okay now we use calculus to show that the revenue is increasing after that now if you just think about okay well that's the key word in here increasing all right so when something is increasing you should be able to make that connection that increasing means you get the derivative and we need to show that the derivative is positive Right, so if the derivative is positive, that means that the function is increasing. Right, even if you don't know, you can't really visualize what it actually means in the long run. Those are the type of connections you need to be making in your head. Okay, so we want to. So what what we're going to do is we're going to again back to this. We're dealing with the derivative, and we're going to substitute thirty into this function, and it comes out as this. Now, how does that answer our question? Well, because this is positive, right? That just shows that it's increasing. Okay, if you wanted to really think about what it means, that's the rate at which the the revenue is changing right it's it's, in, it's increasing at a at a rate of 1263.44 per week right so it's increasing at that point so you do need some sort of a conclusion there i suppose just to say because it's positive that means it's increasing Right, so part E again, when you read the question, right, it looks like looks quite complicated, but the big word that should be jumping out at you in this question is minimum. Okay, because even if you don't quite understand anything of the context here, as soon as you see minimum, you know it's something to do with this rule. The fact that it's a turning point we're looking for, maximum, minimum, and the rule with that is that you get the derivative, put it equal to zero, and solve. Okay, so when you look at your two key questions again, which function are we dealing with? Well, we're not dealing with the original function, we're dealing with the derivative. And are we substituting or solving? Well, we're putting it equal to zero and solving. So it's solving was what we're doing here. And this, so we're putting this equal to zero and solving. And this looks like a quite a complicated looking question, but it's actually not too bad. Like all of this stuff here at the start, because it's equal to zero, we can just cancel that, right? It's all got, so that's, that's an easier enough looking one. So now we just get the inverse sign of zero okay and that will get rid of the sign here so we get the so so pi over 26 t will be equal to the inverse sine of zero now the inverse sine of zero is zero or pi right now zero is is relevant to us so it's actually pi is what we're looking for here so pi t over pi t over 26 is equal to pi is our equation now okay now we need to solve this the pi is actually cancel we cross multiply by 26 so our final answer is actually t is equal to 26 okay now what does that actually mean so we're saying that the, that 20, after 26 weeks, we have either a maximum point or a minimum point. Okay, now look at this then. It's like, you see, we don't know at this point, is it a maximum or a minimum point, right? Because it could be either. So it says, use this to verify your answer. Now, again, the top students here will recognize that the second derivative, there's only two real applications of the second derivative, and that's to find the point of inflection, which is kind of irrelevant to us, but also it's the second derivative test. Right, and that tells you the nature of the turning point. Okay, so let's try and do that. So we now need to go away and find the second derivative of this. Right, so it's just differentiating again. So how do we do that? This all stays the same. Sine is going to go to cos. The angle is going to stay the exact same, but we multiply by the derivative of the angle. Okay, which is this. Okay, now we could simplify that again further, multiply that in there by that. But look at all we have to do. All we need to do now is just take all of this. Multi sub 26 into it 
like this and like just type that into your calculator be very careful type it all into your calculator and we get this number here now what does this number tell us the 328.5 doesn't actually tell us anything but because this is a positive the second derivative test tells us that if, if we sub the value in and if this is a positive it means that this turning point is a minimum point okay so look at the way they said that as the second derivative is positive when t is equal to 26 this suggests that the function is at a minimum point after 27 weeks actually that should be not, not days all right so that's how the second derivative test works